death has been called the great equalizer. No matter who you are or what you do, we are completely powerless in the face of death. We can't stop it and we can't avoid it. Studies show that 40% of Americans fear death to some degree. Some fear death because they believe that the process of dying involves excruciating pain and suffering. Some fear death because they have no control over when and how it will happen. Some fear death because they believe that they will cease to exist and that saddens them. While others are terrified because they believe there will be this horrible reckoning afterwards. And of course, most of us here today know what happens to a body when it starts to decompose. It's not a pretty sight and it's not a pleasant smell. So it's understandable that most people fear death. But that's what makes our readings and especially our gospel astonishing. Because Jesus flips the script. He gives us a radically different view of death. As he encourages us this morning, don't be afraid. Just believe. If you recently were engaging in a conversation with someone and asked them how they are doing, you probably got one of the two typical responses. Crazy busy who are super tired. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're working back-to-back -back shifts at the hospital, or you're working three minimum wage jobs, or if you're taking online classes this summer, or maybe you're just trying to balance all of those obligations along with the summer activities for the kids. Our lives can be busy, hectic, and we get fatigued and exhausted. And at the end of a long day, all we want to do is go home, put our feet up, and just relax. Maybe turn things off, too. But, you know, that's when it happens, right? The boss needs you to work long. And the spouse needs you to stop at the store and grab a few extra items. The kids are clingy and needy. Your best friend calls you and needs some serious advice. Really? Come on. I'm tired. I don't really care. Over the past few weeks, we've been exploring the gospel of Mark. And Mark has been reminding us that it has been a hectic couple of days for Jesus. He had been preaching and performing miracles all day long. He told the disciples, hey guys, let's go to the other side for a little R&R. &R. And then as they got in the boat, that violent storm erupted, it slammed them. They were threat it was threatening to sink the boat. Jesus had to get up and calm the storm. They got to the other side. A man that was possessed by evil spirits, being tormented, approached him. Jesus healed the man, casting the evil spirits into a herd of pigs, which, by the way, didn't make the local people very happy because the evil spirits took the pigs and ran off the cliff to their watery graves. So Jesus wasn't welcome anymore, and he had to get back in the boat and go back to the other side to Capernaum, where he was. And when he got there, another large crowd met him, and that's where our gospel begins in that crowd of people was a synagogue ruler named Jairus. He fell at Jesus' feet and pleaded earnestly with him, My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Really? He just wants a little R&R. &R. And we're not talking about being lazy here. He just wants some physical rest, a little time for some personal meditation and prayer, and maybe a little bit of time for personal instruction with the guys. Would you blame Jesus if he rolled his eyes, if he shook his head and walked away? Or if he just flat out looked at Jairus and said, sorry, man, not today. But that's not what he did. Mark tells us that he gave him his undivided attention. He listened to him because he cares. And then Mark tells us that he walks along with him because he cares. And as he's walking along, 
A woman who had been suffering from chronic bleeding stops Jesus, and as he's interacting with him, some people come and tell Jairus some sickening news. Jesus overhears it, and he goes immediately back over to him and says, Don't be afraid, just believe. Because he cares. He got to the house and he heard all these professional mourners wailing and crying out loud, and he assured them, She's not dead, she's just asleep because he cares. After sending everyone out of the house, he took Jairus, his wife, Peter, James, and John, and he took them into the room to testify to the truth of his words because he cares. And then what happens next is absolutely amazing, a heartwarming for Jairus and his wife, and Jesus tells him to go get some food for her because he cares. There is example after example after example in our gospel this morning that reinforces and underscores the truth of Jesus' words to Jairus. Don't be afraid. Just believe because I care about you and your daughter. What kind of chaos is consuming you right now? Is there some kind of worry or guilt that's entangling you? Are you struggling to sleep at night and find peace during the day? Are you asking for help, but it appears that he's either too busy or too tired or doesn't care? Maybe it's a marriage. Maybe it's the diagnosis from the doctor that's impending. Maybe it's the rising cost of health care, gas prices, and utilities. I want you to know this morning that our Savior Jesus always cares. He's never too busy, and he's never too tired for you. Just look what he's doing this morning. He's taking time right now through his powerful word to strengthen your hearts because he cares. And he, a long time ago, for many of us, through the waters of holy baptism, transformed our status from sinner to saint, planting saving faith in our hearts, the ability to believe and trust in him, and to live our faith according to his word and will, because he cares. Yes, and when we are consumed by chaos and our world is turned upside down, he comes right back to us. And he wraps his loving arms around us and he assures us that he loves us, he forgives us, and we are children of God. And he does that through that special meal where he takes wafer and wine connected to body and blood. It's all evidence. It's all proof that reinforces what Jesus said to Jairus and what he's saying to us through the gospel this morning. That he says, don't be afraid, just believe. Because I care about you. There are certain things we can't do. You might be strong enough to open up a, mar a marinara jar sauce. Uh, you might be strong enough to open a pickle jar. You might be strong enough to pick up a child or grandchild in your arms and hug them. You might be strong enough to run a Ragnar with Pastor Ricky. You might be willing to bench press 200 pounds and do it successfully. But we can't survive without food and water. And we can't magically heal broken bones on demand. And we can't control the weather. And we can't rewind the clock. We are limited in our power and abilities. We're not superhuman. And we're not God. And that's even more evident when it comes to the topic of death. We can't stop it. We can't avoid it. Death wins. Go back to our gospel. Jesus is working with that woman who had been suffering from chronic bleeding. He's helping her. And then this sickening news comes as these men come and tell Jairus that it's too late. Leave the teacher alone. She's gone. And as those words pierced his head and his heart, the disbelief started to flow out of him. No, no, no. No. This can't be. This can't be my little girl. This can't be happening. No, Lord, why? Why is this happening? 
as he is overwhelmed with a flood of emotions, and I see him falling to his knees. And it's in that moment that Jesus steps away from the woman. And I don't know, maybe he puts his hand on his shoulder. Maybe he actually got down on his knees and he embraces him with a hug, but he assured him, she is not dead. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Because I'm in control. They got to the house and, and our reading tells us that there are all these professional mourners wailing and crying. And so Jesus actually asked them, why all the commotion and wailing? This child is not dead but asleep. Because I'm in control. Those professional mourners, this was a time on our tradition. But Jesus is confronting their tradition with the inconsistency of their faith because of what Scripture says, what they believe about the resurrection and what happens after death. Jesus isn't denying the fact that the little girl didn't phys or physically died. She did. But what he is saying is this, is that there's a difference between you and me. I'm here to provide comfort. You're here to magnify the pain and suffering. For these professional mourners, what was their response? They laughed at him. See, they believed they were the experts. They had been around death enough. They understood the process. They understood that there was a chance while she was alive, a hope, a glimmering hope maybe. But she's gone. And there's nothing Jesus can do. And maybe Jairus thought the same thing. Man, Jesus, I've heard about you. You cured lepers. You restored sight to the blind. You calmed the violent storm. You even cast evil spirits out of that guy. But death, nah. Death wins every time. So Jesus sent everyone out, took mom, dad, Peter, James, and John. He went in the room. He went to the edge of the bed and he sat down and he slid his hand under her hand and he tenderly held it. Talitha kum, little girl I say to you, get up. That was it. He didn't jump up and down. He didn't perform life-saving measures. He didn't break a sweat. He spoke two words. And what does our gospel tell us? The little girl was up and walking around as if nothing had ever happened. This miracle is not only astonishing, but it reinforced what Jesus had been saying. I am God, and you are not. And I can do what you can't do. Jesus' life-giving promise, his death-defying power reinforced the beautiful truth that he had been speaking to Jairus. Don't be afraid, just believe because I'm in control. We're not getting any younger. You can religiously work out, eat healthy, take all your vitamins and apply all the right creams and lotions. But it's not slowing things down. Our receding hairlines are there. Wrinkles, gray hairs, joints stiffen, bones are getting a little more brittle. Our hearing, our vision, it's fading. We're one day closer to the grave. Can't stop it, can't avoid it. Death wins. Or does it? Jesus reminds us in the Gospels, or in his New Testament, for he, Jesus, is going to reign until he has put all of his enemies under his feet. And the last enemy to be destroyed is death. And that's exactly what he did on Good Friday. It's exactly what he did on Easter morning. And what does he say? Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. Death doesn't end our existence. No, he changes. He flips the script and reminds us that it escorts us into eternity, to the goal, to be with him in heaven. Yes, when our eyes close of this earth and our corpses are laid into the ground, we're not dead. We're just asleep. He promises, because I live, you also will live. In fact, we will see God with our own eyes. We're going to wrap our own arms around him because he will transform our lowly bodies to be like his glorious body. Jesus' greatest miracle is not just astonishing, but it reinforces what he has been saying all along. I am God, you are not. 
and I can do what you can't do. His life-giving promise, his death-defying power underscores what he is saying to us in our gospel this morning. Don't be afraid. Just believe. Because I'm in control. It blew my mind to see the stats. 40% of Americans fearing death to some degree. But that's what makes Christianity so radically different. Because today we are reminded that Christianity gives us a top-down faith that trusts that our Savior Jesus has intentionally and directly faced our greatest fear, death, and our greatest enemy, and has conquered it completely. And that's why you and I rejoice as Christians. Thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So when it comes to death, don't be afraid. Just believe, because Jesus cares, and Jesus is in control. Amen.